our topic for discussion today is on fertility and when trying becomes tiring. Okay, so um, welcome everyone to the Hello Parenting um, live session. I am Sister Varoshni. I am from the Babies Are Us Wellness Clinic in Boxburg. Okay, so June being World Infertility um, Awareness Month, and in honor of that today, we will be chatting to a fertility specialist, okay? Um, if you're struggling to fall pregnant, it does not necessarily mean that you cannot have a child. There is hope. Our expert advice today um, is um, a doctor, Dr. Sky. So Dr. Sky is a obstetrician and gynecologist at the Vita Lab in Amschlanger in KZN. I am going to be introducing Dr. Sky to you very quickly. I just want to give you a quick introduction about Dr. Sky. So Dr. Sky completed her undergraduate studies at the University of Pretoria. She went on to specialize in obstetrics and gynecology. In addition, she completed her master's in medicine and obstetrics. While completing her master's, she spent time at Vitalab, um, where she um, learned the ropes of their world-class reproductive medicine specialist. And after she joined the team, she is passionate about reproductive medicine. And today we will, we will be discussing about fertility, infertility, um, the causes, and what Vitalab can offer you. So I'm going to draw one second. Just go quickly. Everyone. Hello. Hi, Dr. Sky. Hi. Welcome to the Baby R Us live chat. I am Sister Varashmi and it's an honor to have you here today. Thank you so much, Sister Varashmi. Thanks for having me. Doctor, can you just give us a brief background about yourself and about the practice? Yes, of course. So today I'm coming to you from Vita Lab in Mshanga. We actually have two branches, one here in Mshanga as well as one in Santon and we specialize in fertility. So if you've been trying and you're not succeeding to fall pregnant, then instead of going to a general gynecologist, you would ideally come straight to us, so as to wait, uh, not to waste any time, and we can help to investigate the problem and to try to solve it for you. Okay. Right, so our topic for discussion today is fertility and when trying becomes difficult. Um, doctor, if I had to describe infertility in one word, it would be, you know, emptiness, physical and emotional um, cycles of, of emptiness. What would you say or um, how would you describe infertility to ourselves? So the definition of infertility is the inability to conceive after one year of regular intercourse, which is about three times a week. Um, and you need to be off contraception and not using any protection. Generally, that is sort of the blanket definition, um, but if you are over the age of 35, then generally we recommend actually that you only try for about six months before you come and see a specialist, because age has a really, really big impact on your fertility. Okay, uh, Doc, what, what would you think the causes of infertility would be? So be it um, a female anatomy or a male anatomy. Sure, sure. So often when infertility is discussed, um, people assume that it's you know, a problem with the woman. Um, but actually, in one third of cases, it, yes, it's the woman. But in a second third of cases, it's the man. And in the final third, it's a combined effect. So if the problem is with the woman, then let's look at it anatomically. The problem could be with the ovaries, so you could have a problem with your eggs, so they could, it could be poor quality, you could have run out of eggs, you could not be ovulating, which means you're not releasing an egg. Um, then the problem could be with the tube, which is the transport system from the ovaries into the uterus. And so problems with the tube, the most common one is, is infection. So having previously had chlamydia, which you probably wouldn't even know, it's asymptomatic in most cases. Um, and what can happen is they can get blocked from chlamydia. You can get blocked tubes from endometriosis, 
from previous surgery, from having tied your tubes um, after your first child and then changing your mind and deciding you need to have, uh, you'd like to have another. Um, then the problem could be in the uterus. So the uterus is where the baby will implant. And if there's no space in the, in the uterus, for example, if you have fibroids, which are big uh, muscle masses that are very, very common um, in about 50% of women over the age of 35, um, then that could be a problem. You could have infection in your uterus. You could have had previous surgery in your uterus that's caused scarring and that's preventing implantation. Um, you could have been born with an abnormally shaped uterus. Um, and then you could have a problem with the cervix, which is the mouth of the uterus. Um, it could be, you could have been born with one that's closed. You could have had a procedure that has caused it to close. Um, it could be a problem with the vagina. You may be having sexual sexual issues in which you're, you know, it's too painful to have intercourse. So there are a variety of problems. And that's not even talking about the problems with hormones. So it could be that your hormones are not being released from your brain correctly. You could have chronic diseases, things like diabetes or obesity that are affecting your, your ability to conceive. And then from the male perspective, um, there's pre-testicular, testicular and post-testicular causes. So pre-testicular causes mean that the hormones are an issue. So either you're born with an inability to make those hormones and therefore to make sperm, or those hormones are not being produced um, because you have a chronic disease, something like diabetes. It could be a problem with the testicle itself. So you may have had mumps um, as a, after puberty and that may have rendered your, your um, sperm non-functional. You may be taking steroids or taking medications that are causing the sperm not to be produced. You may have had trauma to your testicle. Um, you may have an, an infection in the testicle. So those are some of the testicular causes. And then the post-testicular causes would be transport problems. So if there's a blockage in the little pipes that transport the sperm out of the testicle, um, that's usually due to um, infections like chlamydia, just like in the woman, but can be due to trauma or can be due to um, having tied those, um, having had a vasectomy in the past. Um, and then any combination of these things can, can happen. So most of my patients have a combined problem where there's a small problem in the female and a small problem in the male and together they create a big problem. Okay. So look, let's talk about a bit um, about this um, the misconceptions you know around infertility. So often you know it's the woman where the issue normally lies. Um, well, it can be woman and male, right? Um, yes, how sir. common is infertility um, both male and female? So it's estimated that about fifteen percent of the population suffers from infertility. So uh, as in both male and female combined, or is it just male, female? So like I mentioned previously, so 15% of the whole population will, will suffer, and then one third will be due to female, one third due to male, and then one third due to a combined effect. Okay, so it's almost equal, you know, yet we as a woman have to suffer this because we are normally yeah. or generally associated with around infertility. So there is a question that came through, Doc. Um, it's from Whitney underscore mama of two. Thank you, Whitney, for your question. Uh, well, actually, it says, I've got the all clear from Doc, but for some reason, for two years, I couldn't conceive even after having our first daughter. After just three weeks of trying, nothing was wrong. It just didn't want to happen. So any advice for Whitney, Doc, for today? So... Secondary infertility is what we call it when you've had a successful pregnancy in the past and now you're struggling to conceive with the second baby. And this happens really, really often. Um, it can happen for a number of reasons. You may have contracted an infection in, in, the, in the time in between. Your operation, if you had a seizure or an evacuation of the uterus, then you may have scarring in the uterus. Um, if your general health status has changed, you may not be ovulating. Um, there are many, many things that could happen. Also, I mean, age is a huge, huge factor. So if you've gotten older, then the quality of your eggs has decreased. Therefore, you may not, even if you do conceive, that little embryo, if it's abnormal, may not implant. So I hear that you, you fell pregnant super easily last time, but perhaps this time you may have fallen pregnant a number of times and not actually even realized it. 
because that little embryo was poor quality and did not implant, so it will just take a little bit longer. Also, getting the all clear from a gynecologist is not really exactly the same as getting the all clear from a fertility specialist, because different things are looked at in different depth of detail. Um, so really, you need to see a fertility specialist to look and investigate all of these things for you. Okay, so she did give us a bit of update. Thank you, Rodney, for the update. It says, finally felt pregnant in jam. Any thoughts why it took so long? Wasn't vitamins and everything. So uh, that was a good yeah. update. So she did actually eventually fall pregnant. Congratulations. So, so that's great news. Congratulations. Um, so then it was probably due to egg quality. So maybe you just weren't getting um, that, that sperm and that egg just weren't meeting. So it could have been a timing issue. It could have been an egg quality issue. Um, but it, it sometimes just takes longer. So generally, in the under 35 group, 80% of couples will conceive within one year. A further 5% will conceive in the following year, but the remaining 15% will be infertile. So you were probably in that further 5% um, that, con that took a little bit longer to conceive, um, and, and you, were, you were lucky that you conceived on your own. Okay, I hope that answered your question, Whitney, and thank you very much for that. Um, so, Doctor, you know, we often hear this, you know, even I've heard this. Um, you're getting old. When are you going to have a baby? Um, you know, it's, it's when, when, when a couple, you know, eventually gets married, I think that's the first question that comes from the families and friends. Like, when, when, when are you going to have kids, you know? Um, Doc, is there, um, does age impact um, fertility? Definitely. So age is a bigger factor in women than in men. So it is a small factor in men. So over the age of 50, um, there is um, an impact on the sperm quality and some um, abnormalities have been found in babies where the father is older than 50. But generally, um, it's a bigger problem than the woman. So men make sperm constantly, every day. They're making millions of sperm until the day they die. Whereas with women, we are born with a set number of eggs, and we lose about a thousand eggs every month. Okay, so as you get older, you're getting fewer and fewer and fewer eggs until you run out completely, and that's menopause. So as you get um, to the bottom of the barrel of eggs, the quality starts to decrease. And what does that mean? It means that the energy in each of those little eggs is not sufficient to carry out. The process of separating the DNA equally. So what happens is instead of having two pairs of each chromosome, so every, we've all got 23 chromosomes that have all got two pairs, so instead of that happening, um, they split unequally. So you may have three copies of chromosome number 21, which is Down syndrome. You may have one copy of chromosome number one, which is not compatible with life. So in those instances, most of the time, that would result in a miscarriage. It can be so early on that you don't even know that you're pregnant, or it could be um, usually in the first trimester, or you could conceive a baby with Down syndrome. So yes, age is a really, really big issue, um, and many, many of my patients come to me um, because, because of this problem. Um, so if you're worried, and if you are one of those people whose family are on your, on your back about when are you having kids, when are you having kids, you know, the, the clock is ticking, and you're not there in your life, don't worry. Come to us and I can easily do an assessment for you. We can do, we can take a history, an examination, do a sonar and give you a rough estimate about, okay, is there really a problem or not? Would it be a good idea to, cons to preserve your eggs so we could stimulate your, egg, your ovaries, get some eggs out and freeze them for the future? Or are you worrying about nothing? And can you just tell your family, you know what, just back off. Just back off. <laughs> Well, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's everywhere, you know, everyone keeps asking you, when are you having kids, you're old, you're getting old, you know, the biological clock is ticking. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, in, in, in society today, you know, as women, um, you know, we choose to have kids in, uh, later on, you know, obviously it could be coming from um, personal goals or, you know, career driven, and we leave having kids for the last minute. And then sometimes, you know, it can, it never happens. Um, and like you said, you know, um, I like that that you guys have like an egg bank strategy, you know, so where you could actually um, store your eggs for later on. So everyone that's listening, you can you can store your eggs for later on. <laughs> okay, there are a few more questions that are coming in, Doc. 
first one just says early in your pregnancy. Congratulations. Yes. Um, so, Doc, um, what tests would you perform to, to actually diagnose infertility? All right, so when you come, come to Vita Lab, um, first of all, you would have a consultation with one of the doctors um, and we would ask you a thorough history of you and your partner um, and then we would examine you and then we do a, a transvaginal scan so that we can see the uterus well, we can have a look at the ovaries, we can see if there are any abnormalities that we can pick up, things that um, are, are quite obvious in sonar. And then we do a number of blood tests just to check your hormone levels, your vitamin D status, your thyroid function, all the things that can sort of affect your, your fertility. We do a blood test that also looks at your ovarian reserve. Um, so that tells me sort of how many eggs you've got left and how you would respond to any fertility treatment should you need it. Um, and yeah, that would give me a basic idea of of what the problem is. Um, in women specifically, one of the tests that we like to do here is called an HSG, which is a hysterosalpingogram. And what that entails is um, putting a little syringe through the cervix and then injecting some contrast whilst we're doing an X-ray video. And that contrast goes up through the uterus, up the tubes, and out into the pelvis. And that tells me, yes, your tubes are open, the problem is not the tubes. Um, so that's very helpful. And then from the male perspective, he, the most important test is the semen analysis. So the way that works is the gentleman would come in, um, he books an appointment, and then he'd come to a private room where he'd give us a sample. And within a few hours, we had the results. And we assess that sperm for volume. So you, you need to have an adequate amount of sperm for concentration. We um, assess the morphology, so that's the shape of the head, the neck, the body, and the tail of the sperm, and then the, um, the motility, so is it moving fast and forward? And with all of those parameters, we can then assess, all right, is there a problem with the sperm? Is it possible that this is the reason why you're not falling pregnant, or is the sperm okay, and then we can, we can move on? If there's a problem with the sperm, um, for example, some men will come and give us a deposit and you'll have an adequate volume, which is about 1.5 mils, so anything more than that is fine, um, but there won't be any sperm in that sample. And if that happens, then we need to do further tests for the male where we can do a blood test to assess the hormone levels to find out where is the problem exactly. Is it with the hormones? Is it with the testicle? Is it a blockage? Um, or is it a problem with the chromosomes? So was this person born with the problem? Um, so we would do a chromosome blood test as well. Um, and then once we have all that information, we can, we can diagnose what the problem is. Okay, all right. Um, doctor, uh, tell me any signs and symptoms that should make me worry about um, fertility? So be it the male, be it the female? Sure. So um, from a male perspective, if you have um, one testicle that's very small um, or that is very hard and feels abnormal, if you've had a, if you have a mass on your testicle, if your penis is very small or the um, urethra, which is the hole at the end, is placed uh, in a strange position, if you don't have any um, hair growth on your, on your beard or on your chest, um, things like that, if you have abnormal breast development, um, those kind of things are, are a red flag. Um, also, if you're struggling with sexual intercourse, so if you've got erectile dysfunction, if you're unable to orgasm, etc., then, then those are red flags for men. From the female perspective, if you are having a regular period and it's not very painful, you only have like a bit of discomfort the day or two before and the first day and then it goes away, then that's generally reassuring. But if your period is irregular, if you are bleeding very heavily, if you are not seeing your period at all, if you have terrible pain, these are all signs that you need to come and get um, get checked out because it may be that there's that there's a problem. Okay, <clears throat> here's another question, Doc. Does stress affect fertility? Yes, I get this all the time. <laughs> so yes, um, it's quite a tricky question because. There have been many studies um, that have tried to answer this question, but stress is a very subjective thing. Um, and it comes in many different forms and people have different reactions to different levels of stress. So it's quite difficult to definitively say, yes, stress has an effect. 
But from my experience, I can say, yes, stress does have an effect. If you are stressed, you are not sleeping well, you are not exercising, you're not eating well, your relationship suffers, your sexual function suffers. So all of these things play a role. Um, and even if you're concentrating on eating well and exercising and you're ticking all the boxes and it's still not happening, that stress, that stress of I need to get pregnant now and and forcing the issue. You want to happen. You want to happen. Now, now, now. And exactly. exactly. And it's horrible. And it's horrible to say, you know, oh, don't obsess about it because when you decide you want a baby, that's all, all you can think about. Um, but I found that sending my patients, if, if they're suffering from an anxiety disorder or a depressive disorder um, or an acute stress disorder, depending on what's happening in their lives, then sending them to a psychologist definitely does improve their outcomes, as well as sending them for acupuncture. So there um, is de definitive evidence that acupuncture um, related to IVF has actually improved incomes by decreasing stress levels and improving blood flow. Um, and I've got a wonderful, wonderful um, colleague here in the Lucia, um, her name's Lulu Becker. She's a pelvic physio and she does this acupuncture for us and we're getting fantastic results. So yes, I definitely think that stress plays a role. How can I reduce the risk of infertility? How can one reduce the risk of infertility? Yeah, um, so I mean, if you're born with a problem, then no matter what you do, it's going to be an issue. Um, so there's no like foolproof way of making sure that you're fertile. However, um, lifestyle factors can definitely um, help you to reduce your risk. So um, eating a healthy diet, exercising, um, having a good, keeping a good, good relationship and sexual function. Um, if you have any chronic diseases, making sure that those are, are under control um, and well managed. Um, and yeah, in men, um, one of the things, there are quite a few lifestyle factors with men um, and with women. Uh, smoking is a huge one, so not smoking Absolutely. is, is really well. <laughs> yeah. Men and women, um, it affects sperm motility and it affects your, the tube, um, the tube's ability to stay open. And um, your risk for ectopic pregnancy is four times higher. In, um, in, in the woman who smokes. Um, and then for men, things like excessive um, exercise, uh, particularly cycling, can be associated with decreased sperm counts because it's um, those tight pants and the compression and it gets very hot. Um, smoking marijuana in men is associated with decreased motility. Um, yeah, so generally lifestyle, lifestyle things. And one other thing, interestingly, sorry to interrupt you, um, there's a lot of um, bad press around taking the contraceptive pill. And people think, oh, well, if you take the contraceptive, then it's going to mess up your hormones. And, and that's, that's just not true. So there's absolutely no evidence that taking the contraceptive pill will lead to infertility. And in fact, if you have polycystic ovaries or endometriosis, it's actually protective of your fertility. So being on contraception is protective for your fertility. So when you when you say contraceptive, does this also include like the injection, um, the patches that you get? I know there's quite a um, huge variety of uh, you know. Of yes. that so you I'm specifically I'm specifically talking about the combined oral contraceptive. Okay. Um, the injection and the patch are progesterone based. They don't have any estrogen in them, and as a result, they stop your period. Um, which is safe, but it is associated with a bit of a longer return to fertility. So with the pill, you can stop the pill and the next month you can fall pregnant, um, as with the Mirena, so as you remove it, you can fall pregnant, but with the injection, you'll you have a significant delay um, to fertility. So it may take you a year to 18 months to get your period back normally and to start ovulating again if you're on the injection. Okay, so um, Doc, I know um, you also have a... Um a big thing around PCOS, right? It's one of your favorite topics. <laughs> um, can you tell us um, um, or give uh, advice on any woman that's suffering from PCOS? Many people just hear PCOS, they don't know what it is. Um, they don't know the, you know, they don't even know what PCOS stands for. Can you give us a little intro sure. around that, Doc? Yes, of course. So PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So it's very, very common. Um, we generally it will present as a patient who starts to skip periods 
and it comes in many forms. So generally the typical form is a patient who is slightly overweight and who suffers from acne and who suffers from sometimes having some abnormal hair growth on their chin between their breasts, maybe on their back and in their groin area. Um, and then these menstrual irregularities as well. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have all of those things ticked to have polycystic ovaries. So many people will only have the menstrual irregularities or will only have the severe acne um, and, the, and the hair growth. So um, it, it's quite a variable presentation, but basically what's happening is your ovaries are not functioning the way they're supposed to due to an imbalance of hormones coming from your brain. So your brain is supposed to tell your ovaries to release one egg every month. That's called ovulation. Um, and when you have polycystic ovaries, that's not happening. And as a result, your testosterone levels go up and that's what causes the acne and the, the hirsutism. And if you're not ovulating, you're not falling pregnant. So basically, um, what we need to do for those patients is we need to, the, the best treatment is weight loss. So we often find up to 50% of patients suffering with polycystic ovaries, if they lose 10% of their weight, then they start to ovulate again on their own. Alternatively, if that doesn't work, then we can start by giving medication to induce ovulation. And if that doesn't work, then we move on to, to more invasive methods like IVF. But basically, if you are worried that your period is, um, you have 60 day periods, you're missing one period, two periods, three periods, then that may be your issue and you need to come and see a fertility specialist if you're trying to conceive or a general gynecologist if you are not trying to conceive at the moment. Okay, so doc, for some of them who, are, you know, that don't know that they have PCOS, um, what are the dangers of PCOS if it's left untreated? So, um, so infertility is the first, um, first, first problem. The second problem is that it's associated with high levels of um, insulin resistance. So you are at higher risk of getting diabetes. Once you do fall pregnant, you are at an increased risk of miscarriage, of getting diabetes in pregnancy, and of your baby being obese and getting diabetes in their future. You also have an increased risk of getting endometrial cancer because if you're skipping your period, so skipping your period due to contraception is fine, it's completely safe. But if you're skipping your period and you're not on contraception, then it can be dangerous. And basically your endometrial lining, which is the lining on the inside of the uterus, starts to misbehave um, because it's not shedding every month. And that misbehaving can end up in a cancer long term. So it's important to get it checked out. Okay. I've got a question here from Lulama. Manjudula, if, okay, I think she missed a letter there. If I had an ectopic pregnancy, is there any chance that I can still get pregnant? Thank you, Lulama, for your question. Yes, of course. So an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy outside of the uterus. Um, most ectopic pregnancies happen inside the tube. And what happens is that baby implants in the tube and starts to grow and the tube's tiny. It's really, really skinny. So as soon as that pregnancy gets a bit larger, it bursts that tube open and you start to bleed into your tummy and you can actually die from it. And most people um, are managed by an operation where they remove that tube. Um, some, some people are lucky and they, their tube is still intact and they manage to just remove the pregnancy and keep the tube. But most of the time that tube is quite scarred up and won't conceive on that side anyway. But you still have another tube. So yes, your risk of getting another ectopic is high, depending on what the cause of the initial ectopic was. So remember we said problems with the tube can be due to infections or endometriosis or previous surgery. So if that problem is affecting the other tube, then your risk of getting another ectopic is high. But it's not impossible for you to conceive. Definitely not. Okay, so Lulama, I hope Docs has um, answered that question for you. I've got another one from Lintasha Ramkusun. Lintasha, thank you for your question. Is Ovisol good to use as a medication for PCOS? Sorry, which medication? Is Ovistol good to use as a medication for PCOS? I'm afraid I'm not um, aware of what, 
what dr drug that is exactly, sorry. Um, I think it's probably a trade name. Um, if you can tell me what's in it, then I can advise you. Okay, we'll have to come back to that one. So I've got another one from um, Kayla. Kayla on set. Um, hi, Dr. Sky. What is the first step to finding out if I have PCOS or fertility problems? I think Dr. Sky. So, yes, so you're welcome to book an appointment. So um, you'll find us online at VitaLab KZN. Um, and if you're in Joburg, then you can um, look up VitaLab Santon and come in we'll do a history examination we'll do a sonar and we'll look for all those little cysts in your ovaries and then we'll do a blood test to confirm it and um, then we'll look at your fertility options from there okay um doc, so we know everything comes in time right but um late ovulation can be frustrating especially if you you're trying to conceive you know when your partner it becomes really frustrating what causes late ovulation so this is a bit of a tricky question because what is late ovulation so people's cycles vary a lot so you can have a 35 percent variation from month to month in terms of how long your cycle is generally we say a normal cycle is less than 55 days okay and most people have about a 28 to 30 day cycle so if your cycle is 28 to 30 days, you should be ovulating on about day 14. And if you're having a 35-day cycle, then it's close to day 17, day 18. And the way that you can check that is by doing an ovulation test kit. You can get them from your pharmacy, or from, I'm not sure if you can get them from Baby Paras. It's probably be available in pharmacies, yes. And, um, and basically, you urinate on that stick on the day that you're supposed to be ovulating. And you can track your cycle quite easily with a, a variety of fertility apps. And um, when you urinate on that stick, it will tell you, yes, you've got LH in your, in, your, in your body, which means that you have ovulated or not. So what would cause you to not ovulate? Polycystic ovaries is the biggest one, but other things are um, if you're exercising like crazy or you're very, very underweight um, or you're very, very stressed, then sometimes your hormones just say, nope, it's not a good time to have a baby and it doesn't cause ovulation. Um, and those are your, your main main causes. Um, so late ovulation in itself, so it's, if you're testing and you find that, okay, it's on day 21, if you're ovulating and you've proven that you've ovulated, doesn't matter when it happens, you can still conceive. So late ovulation, not a problem, but an ovulation, so not ovulating, is a problem. Um, so, you know, thanks to technology, Doc, there are a lot of ways to help people, you know, with all kinds of uh, fertility um, issues. Um, can you tell us the top fertility treatments that Vitalab offers? Sure. So, we want to do the easiest, least invasive thing first, okay? So, if we can solve your problem and you can go home and conceive on your own, then that's the first prize for us. So, if we can diagnose a problem like you've got underactive thyroid, we give you some medication to boost your thyroid and hey presto, you conceive, then that's great. So fixing whatever problem we diagnose medically is the first step, okay? And of course, those lifestyle um, issues that we spoke about, stopping smoking, losing weight, etc. okay? The next thing is if you have a structural problem, so if we did a sonar and we found that you've got fibroids in your uterus or you've got a polyp inside your uterus, then we can take you for, for surgery and we could remove that problem. So we can operate via uh, um, a hysteroscopy, which is a little camera that goes in through the vagina, through the cervix, and we can remove whatever's inside the uterus. Or we can do a laparoscopy where we make little holes in your tummy and put a camera inside and we remove a fibroid or endometriosis or whatever the problem is. And then your chance of conceiving is based in the three months following whatever procedure you had um, and if it's a fibroid then you need to heal for three months and then you'll try in the following three months if these are not the problem if the problem is an ovulation then the first thing it would be the weight loss if it's polycystic ovaries followed by medication to induce ovulation so that comes in the form of a medication usually called um, letrozole and you take that medication from day two to day five of your period, and that stimulates your own body's hormones to release an egg. 
If that's not successful, then we can give you injections um, of a more direct hormone that can cause ovulation. And if that's still not successful, then we need to go one step further up to IVF. But before we get to IVF, um, if you have a male problem, um, so if the problem is with um, a mild uh, male factor, like the sperm's a little bit slow or this is a little bit less than we'd like, then you could go for a problem uh, for a solution like um, artificial insemination, where we would track your cycle, we'd identify exactly when you're ovulating, and then at that point, your partner would come and bring us a sperm sample, we would inject that sperm, and that gives you a 15% chance of conceiving. So none of these things are 100%. So we can't guarantee that you will fall pregnant, but we can do our best to get the sperm and the egg in exactly the right place, in a uterus that is as receptive as possible, and then the rest is up to you. So if none of these options are working, then the next step is IVF or ICSI. Okay, so um, IVF is when we take a sperm and an egg, we put them together in the lab to make an embryo, and after five days, we put that embryo back inside your uterus. So the indications for doing that are if you've had many miscarriages and we're thinking that it's probably because you've got poor egg quality and you're making abnormal embryos, then IVF is a good option because what we can do is on day five, we can test that embryo's DNA to make sure if it's normal or not and only put the normal ones back in. So that's one of the solutions. If you've got blocked tubes on both sides, so we did that HSG that we spoke about and we detected that the tubes are blocked, then there's no way for the egg to get into the uterus. And so we need to take those eggs out, make the embryo, and then put it back in for you. Or if you've had two ectopic pregnancies, there are a number of, of reasons why we need to do IVF. Or if you've failed with the more conservative options, then IVF is, is the next step. Um, and what it involves is, um, it's quite heavy on the, on the lady's side compared to the man, unfortunately. So um, uh, as the woman, you would come in on day two of your period and we do a baseline scan, we start taking some injections, we do some scans throughout your cycle, then um, once, what our aim is, is to try to stimulate all of those little follicles, which are the little bubbles each containing an egg in your ovary. Usually, remember we said that only one egg comes out every month, so, and the rest of those little eggs that are available usually just die. So what we're doing is we're not making more eggs. We can't take eggs that aren't there. So we're just rescuing those eggs that were going to die that month and taking them out. So that all depends on your age. So if you're 18 years old, we could get 20. But if you're 35, we could get five. And if you're 40, then we may only get one or two. Um, so yeah, so that's IVF. And once we've got those eggs out, we mix them with the sperm, like I said, and make those embryos. ICSI, um, is if you've got a, a male factor and the egg and the sperm can't fertilize on their own in that little petri dish, then what we do is we take the best sperm and we inject it into the egg um, to assist fertilization. So, so if you've heard of XC, that's what that is. Um, and yeah, so those are most of our um, uh, things that we the things that we do routinely. Um, of course, there are other surgeries and other options. Um, we do a lot of work with same-sex couples who need um, assistance conceiving. Um, so for um, same-sex female couples, we will do um, artificial insemination with donor sperm. Um, and with same-sex male couples, we um, also assist with surrogate pregnancies. So we offer a range of fertility options here at Peter. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that, Donna. Where can our followers find more information about Vitalab? So we have a website, um, if you just Google Vita Lab, um, you'll find us online. We also have a YouTube channel that has lots of videos um, like this one um, with fertility information as well as videos on how to um, inject yourself and all, all the ins and outs of the, um, uh, of the reproductive medicine um, treatments. Um, you can also find us under Vita Lab SA on Facebook and Instagram. So the question that came through from um, Natasha Rampasun. Okay, she did update us on that. I just want to get very quickly. Um, it had inocytal in it, says apologies. 
in order uh, to yes. that, um, ring a bell, Doc? Yes, yes. So um, inositol is often used um, as a treatment um, in patients with polycystic ovaries. So you'll find it in a lot of um, prenatal vitamins um, and it has been proven to be um, effective in improving your chances of ovulating. Um, I'm not certain whether it's a good idea to carry on with inositol during pregnancy. Um, I'm, I stand to be correct that I, I'm not 100% sure whether it's, it's been proven to be safe or not but it's definitely not necessary during your pregnancy. So I would then um, rather change to a, a, a pregnancy vitamin. Okay. Okay, so like you mentioned, we've got... two five hundred ...to give away. We're almost at the end. attentively. I am going to be posting those questions soon and um, if you are listening you're going to answer me correctly. Doc, any words of encouragement for our followers uh, before you leave us? Doc? Yes, so you know the topic of this discussion was when trying becomes tiring and, and I see this all the time you know I, I see couples um, who they decided they want a baby and from the minute you decide you want that baby right now and I understand it's a really difficult journey to go on um, but don't waste time you know if you're over 35 and it's been six months come and see us if it's if you're under 35 and it's been a year come and see us I can help okay there is another question from Nicole Young 5618 Nicole thank you for your question how long can one store eggs Sorry, please can you repeat? Doc, uh, there's a question from Nicole Young. How long yeah. can one store eggs? So how long can you store your so, eggs? So, there is... Just lock stock for a minute. I think she's having some network problems. We're just going to try and wait for her to get back on. While we're waiting for Doc, I am going to be posting the questions like I've mentioned. So if you have been listening attentively, we're going to get a winner today. Okay. So I've got two questions because we've got two 500 vouchers to give away up for grabs, grabs today. Seems like we've already got a winner. Okay, I'm still typing out the question. I hope everyone's been listening. We seem to have lost um, Dr. Sky. Okay, so we seem to have a winner. So the first question was, which Vitalab is Dr. Sky based at? Um, Shalone. Please forgive me if I pronounce this wrong. Shalone is our, wow, well, that was a quick response. Thank you very much. Vitalab KZN. Our team will contact you after this. Uh, I have posted another question. Does age impact a woman's fertility? So Kayla, thank you for the question before and now. Thank you for answering. Um, the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, I think we have lost Doc. We have lost Dr. Sky. Um, Kayla, our team will contact you after this because you are the winner right now. Oh, 
up. There we go. Just trying to get Dr. back on line. Hi, so sorry. sorry. I was trying. I'm really sorry. It is the network. We actually have two winners. So I have um, two yeah. questions. Uh, one being, uh, where is Dr. Sky based? Um, so I, everyone has been listening attentively. Um, we have a winner there. She is based in Amstranga Vitalab in KZN. And the other question was, does, um, does age uh, impact a woman's fertility? And that is absolutely yes. Um, yeah, there, there was another question here for you, Doc. Sorry. That was me. Okay, so I think that is it. We have covered all of the questions. So if we haven't covered your question, we Okay, so there is another question. Sorry, Doc, last question. Um, it says, hello, what steps or changes or treatments is recommended on lean, which is skinny? So it means if, you, if you're skinny, PCOS is when, oh my gosh, okay, let me start this again. So it says, hello, what steps or changes or treatment is recommended for someone obviously who is skinny with PCOS? Um, what would likely uh, be the underlying causes? So she's basically saying that she she's not um, she's petite, you know, but still no, no, develops okay. people. So this often happens. So not everyone with polycystic ovaries is going to have the classical triad of um, obesity, hyperandrogenism, and um, menstrual irregularity. Many patients are are leaner. Um, so if your aim is fertility, you need to come and see a fertility doctor, we need to do an assessment, we need to try and get you on ovulation induction um, and failing that, then um, IVF would be your next bet. Um, if you're not trying to conceive and you just want to stay healthy, then I would recommend um, that you again see a gynecologist and that you are on the contraceptive, uh, combined oral contraceptive pill to ensure that you are shedding your uterine lining regularly. Um, and that will also improve your ability to conceive um, directly after stopping the, the contraceptive, um, contraceptive pill. Okay, there's another one, sorry. Does Vitalab take medical aid or cash? I guess this is always... So, yeah, so we, um, IVF is covered under um, one medical aid at the moment in South Africa. So if you are with Discovery on the comprehensive plan, um, and there are a whole lot of T's and C's about how long you've been part of it, et cetera, et cetera, and you'll have to go into that on your own, um, then part of the IVF um, will be covered. But apart from that, we are a cash practice. Um, at the Amschlange branch, we do do general gynecology as well. So um, I don't only do fertility, I do general gynae. Um, so if you're coming for a general gynae, um, uh, consultation and you need an operation, then of course that would be covered by your medical aid. Okay, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, and delicious. Thank you very much for the question. Doc, um, if there's anything else that you'd like to um, enlighten our guests or listeners before you leave us. Oh, I just want to say thanks so much for having me. It's been really lovely, and I'm a huge fan of the Baby Zara's brand. Um, Thank you. I recently had a little baby myself. And, oh, congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, and yeah, I'm a, a regular customer at Baby Zara's uh, Gateway. Um, so yeah, thanks again for having me. Yay. So please get all your friends, family, colleagues to join our page so they can also interact with the, these lovely chats that we have. Thank you, Doc. It was such a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.